everybody, and welcome to the Quadcopter Review. I'm your host, Pepe Prawns, and as always, don't forget to like and comment on this video and subscribe to the channel. Subscribing really helps us out. Up here at the top on all my videos, you'll see the latest giveaways going on here at the channel. And today we're going to go ahead and take all those parts that we got from video one, the mystery drone drop two to three inch, which actually turned out to be a two and a half inch. And we're going to go ahead and build this little guy out as promised and put a little flight to it and see what we got when we got this package. So let's go ahead and start clearing all this stuff out of our way. Now, what I usually start with is I attach these motors onto the frame. That's how I start most of my builds. Just get them on, see what we're going to need for wiring, what needs to be snipped there and they're going to be soldered on first so we might as well get those going right away so as always don't don't forget here that this was not your standard drone drop this was a special drone drop um where they usually will give you everything you need except for receiver also quad box does this as well and it's called a mystery box so it's not the regular drop so don't think you would get this in a regular drop so what we've got here is the base plate, top plate, and our little vertical stand up there. It, that's where we're going to strap our receiver. We've got our nuts and bolts and our standoffs and our camera mounts. Then we're going to take these 3B Hobby motors, the 1105 motors that came with the kit, and we're going to bolt those down on there. What we're going to do is probably put this into speed motion for you, taking these uh, bolts we got in the kit and screw these guys down because I'm sure it's not that exciting to watch somebody screw down a bunch of motors But I'll show you how I handle the first one here What I usually do is these are very small holes and the bolts that came with it are actually you know just long enough because we've got those bottom of the motors we need to concern ourselves about not getting your bolt up into the motor so they're just long enough so what I usually do is put the one in line it up screw it down not tight make sure you keep it loose so you can move the motor around to get your next bolt in so let's fire through this part here get all four motors on and we'll come back once those are all set okay on to the next step now you'll see we've got a lot of extra wire here you can clip that off if you wanted to or wrap it around your standoff a lot of people do as well and come back to solder them now i'm just gonna wrap mine up and zip tie them down because i might use these motors again on another project and i don't want to snip them down too short so next up let's take our fly color f4 out of the box and we're going to mount that onto the quad itself this is uh, nice, it's already pre-wired. We're gonna go ahead and put our XT30 on there as well. We've got some extra wires here that go along with the board for your RX and so on. But first, here it is. Here's the board, a little F4 board. The pads are pretty decently spaced, uh, a little tight on that long set of pads there where your RX and your camera go, but uh, we can work our way around that. But first thing we need to do is we're gonna connect the FC to the the ESE and mount that down so that we can go ahead and start soldering on our power source and our little uh, motors. So we flip it back here. Once we've got our wiring, we can flip it back out of our way. I have mounted it, but you'll note I keep the nuts nice and loose, so don't put them all the way down to the board. Um, and you need to do that with this one, or otherwise the board will just keep falling off. So. That's what I did, and that keeps those nuts out of the way because when you're soldering, um, they're so close to the board, you often will end up hitting them with your soldering iron, which is not any good. So let's just line this guy up and we'll pre tin up our little pads and we'll get our power supply on. Now I have the TS100, and if you've ever wondered, you know, why you hear so much about the TS100 and how great it is and stuff, uh, check out the heat time on this guy and how quickly it's going to get up to heat. Now I run anywhere, depending on the project, from 350C to 370C. If I want to just touch quickly and have it bond, I run the 370. But remember, if you're going to run a higher C on your iron make sure you don't touch the pad very long three seconds is a good rule on that just count one two three and make sure you take the heat off it let it cool and then reapply if you're going to run at a high heat also when you're done make sure you take your denatured alcohol and take that extra flux off you see that black that started showing up next to the two pads that's the flux getting on the board and you don't want anything to cause any kind of uh, bridge in your pads so make sure you do that as well when you're doing your soldering now if you're not going to build a lot of them an inexpensive iron is going to work fine um 
people promote the expensive iron a lot, but if you don't need it, you know, you don't need to go in that direction. So here we go. What we do is we're going to pretend our ESCs and you just hit them up and make a nice pretty bubble on each one of those. Uh, one thing about this um, particular board is uh, I like the way the pads are, the way the um, they wrap actually from top to bottom around. So you get a really, really nice uh, ball on your pad when you're laying that down. So that's that's something I really liked about this one. So we go ahead and pretend this side. And we're going to take our wires. Now, I always start in the middle. Again, a million ways you can do these things, guys. I'm not telling you this is exactly the way to do it. But I start in the middle because if you don't, things get a little bit tight, it seems to me, once you start putting them all on. Uh, and you get toward the middle and it just your other wires seem a little too close and in your way. So, like I said, when I'm running um, 370 here, I can just make a quick touch like that. And there we go nice and ready and then we'll pull those out of our way and as you saw as i got to the last pad being right-handed that nut gets dangerously close so if you have that all the way down near the pad you're going to melt the nut so keep it up out of your way as you're doing this particular part of the process and and i usually i mean it's pretty consistent if i take these motors and take the far right hand wire and put it on the far right hand third pad for that motor and middle and then left what I end up with is I will end up with one in four needing to be reversed in BL Heli and two and three are naturally uh, normal. So uh, when I do it that way, I pretty much know what I'm going to expect when I go into my motors and check my motors to see uh, if everything's turning the right way. So as you can see, we just punched out the other side as well, and we have all that extra wire, but I'll show you what I did with that extra wire when we get to the end. Now I'm going to flip the FC over onto that, but I need to remove these nuts that I had temporarily holding everything together so it wouldn't fall apart or move while I was building. So we're going to get these out of our way. We're going to drop down our flight controller onto the top. You can do several different things with your wires if you want to. I just left them the way they were because they'll tuck into the front just fine. So what we're going to do there is we'll put those in. And once again, I'm going to put the nuts on, but I'm going to lightly, you know, put them on. I'm just going to make sure they're holding so if I lift it up, everything doesn't fall off and uh, keep them high enough out of my soldering area. So... What we do next is we're going to mount our camera in VTX onto this guy and make sure that uh, we have it, our flight controller and everything wired up. What I do is, is I put all the parts on. I don't then assemble the quad and I highly recommend this. Leave all the parts out loose and hanging when you're going to go to plug in, put it on uh, beta. Um, on beta flight and when you're going to test your VTX to your goggles make sure you can see through the camera make sure you your VTX here this uh, TBS Nano that we got make sure all that stuff works before you assemble the quad um, when I started this you know that's a new guy mistake you put it all together then you crank her up and something would be wrong but check out how tiny that nano is it's a thumbnail in size I mean it's ridiculously small and if I'm not mistaken I just saw that they put out a new nano where they have now not made the back end of the board where you solder to which was kind of interesting to solder to it wasn't wasn't that fun in my opinion actually kind of scary just the way those are so they're making a new one where they're closing off those those soldering pads on the back so that they're normal soldering pads instead of like somebody cut the end of it off and they're adding the button to the board so you won't end up this board had a separated button that you'd have to wire in line in order to use it so that's being changed which is good news and probably why this made it to the kit because they're they're taking this v1 out of production and it was a definitely a good way to get us a good product and get rid of it for them at the same time so that's what we're going to do. I'm going to wire this stuff up and I'm going to come back with it showing you where it was wired. Now, I'm going to take the manual to do it because this did come with a paper manual, very clear and such like that. But I like to make sure when I show you instead of part of this build process here when I'm doing it, I like to show you when it's done and it's done correctly because I don't want anybody watching the video see me solder it to a wrong place and then do the same because they stopped watching, let's say, the next two minutes of the video where I came back and said, oh, I screwed up and put that on the wrong pad. So I'm going to take this manual. I'm going to go ahead and solder the pieces on there and then I'll come back and confirm to you that all the places that I've chosen and the manual shows actually worked so you can see it functioning. So let's take a look at here at what we ended up with. Now we can see we have the camera set up, we've got our 
little, um, basically it's an FR Sky Mini with, uh, it's not diversity, so it's not the XM Plus, but it's just the Mini. That's what I happen to have on hand, guys, but it wires the same as an XM Plus if you go that route. We also have our little Nano VTX right here as well, and I actually have this uh, TPU mount where I can show you uh, where to get that on Thingiverse if you can print your own, or you can connect with me on pandemicfpv.com where I can print it up for you. So looking at the VTX upside down, you have five volt, then ground as your left to right, and then we're skipping the things in between. And on the far right hand side, we have our smart audio on the far right and then the VTX or video as it's labeled on the VTX in the yellow wire. So we're gonna plug our, our smart audio into TX6 here on the board and then you skip one and the video is there next to the camera in. That's where those are going to get soldered. The VTX will run off of 5 volts, so I have that soldered in over here on the 5 volt pad on the far right front of the board and the ground next to it right there. Now this little uh, TBS camera does not run on 5 volts, so although it says 5 volt on the back of it, don't plug it into any 5 volt pads on your board. You're going to want to run that off the VBAT, and the VBAT is in the back left corner here. And that's where I've soldered on my negative and positive back here. And it's so just left there of the video, we've got negative for VBAT, positive for VBAT, and we've got our camera yellow wire. So like I said, you can see the pads are a little close for soldering on, but you can get it done. So from left to right, we've got positive for the VTX, negative for the VTX. We've got our smart audio on, RX, or on TX6. We've got our video, then we've got our camera, and then positive on the VBAT, negative on the VBAT. So I'm taking this inexpensive smoke stopper, which I highly recommend from Get FPV, and we're plugging it in. We've got green lights. As you can see, we're getting good power across the board. This is the part where I would plug in my goggles, look through them, make sure I can see through my camera, don't forget your lens cap, and make sure everything's working through the VTX like the smart audio. After that, right here on our VTX, if you get an orange light when you fire up this mini, that means it's locked, and you're just gonna have to do a button procedure in order to unlock it. So make sure you check that, you want that blue light, it does have a little sequence that starts up. Make sure you have that blue light and that's when your VTX is actually going to be on and working. We've got it connected to smart audio, so we'll go ahead and change our power in our channel and everything through the goggles once we get that set up. So now we can actually bolt down our nuts, <laughs> finally, and lock everything in place. And we're just going to do that with the TPU mount here and lock that guy in and then our full set is going to be uh, ready. Uh, the bottom, I didn't show you the bottom of this little TPU, but it has a, a piece of a flat piece of TPU under it and breathable space so the VTX can breathe, yet it's going to keep that heat because these little guys get hot. Um, it's going to keep that heat off of your flight controller. So really good little print. Uh, definitely something interesting. I wish they did this for a lot of other ones. So at this point, we're just going to tuck everything in. We're going to take our bolts and we're going to lock everything down. Uh, this particular frame has enough gap, guys, where you could even put uh, a Turtles or a Run Can Split Mini uh, in it. There's lots of room in this, and they're actually using this frame on some Cinewoops. So keep that in mind if you want to change that out. So uh, at this point, I'm trying to figure out what am I going to do with this dipole. Um, it's just in a really bad place. It's not long enough to come out where that hole in the back where I believe they intended it to, to go. It just doesn't, doesn't work there. So I'm probably gonna put a buffer between it and the carbon fiber and strap it to the side there. But what we do now is we're gonna take our little um, receiver and we're gonna tuck it in. And that little vertical plate that we used right there was specifically designed for this. So, so you know, thumbs up on the design in that case. Because what we can do is just take that, we can zip tie it down. So here it is all done with our props on. We've got our antenna shrink wrapped on the back. We're gonna point, you know, upwards on that. It's not a rabbit ear, so it's a rabbit ear that somebody cut one of the ears off. And as you can see, I, I went ahead and zip tied the dipole to the side. 
I bundled up those wires and I zip tied them on. As I mentioned, I didn't want to cut them. Now on this guy, I'm going to give you footage of both the FPV camera and I'm going to use the Firefly Mini Action Camera. If you haven't seen my videos, look through my videos, find the Firefly stuff. Um, $25, way cheaper than um, getting a Split Mini or a Turtle. If you want to do some footage and you want to get started in some footage and, and you have a budget, you can get one of these guys. Um, again, Pandemic FPV, I make those mounts. It also comes with a mount, but it, it's between $20 and $25 these days. I'm going to use the 4S. But again, back to the, the Firefly, it is not, um, it, it's 1080 at 30 frames per second, not 60. But remember, uh, on YouTube, most people don't even know to go in the gear and change it to high def. So you're not doing bad at 30 frames. It's definitely good enough. It doesn't have the color changing issues as badly as, let's say, a Cyclops or something like that, or uh, an SQ-13, or th this is by far one of my, my favorite mini actions. So let's get ripping through the yard. This guy had power and power to spare. I'm actually being super tame here. I actually forgot I had it in uh, stable mode as well when I started off, and this is actually after a crash already, so you can see the battery's a little bit low because when I first took off, I mean, this this little guy just wants to go, wants to go, wants to go. Uh, I blame myself a little bit because I put my normal PIDs on it, which are, are fairly aggressive, and I take the mid points out a lot in mine, so most of my reactions on the ends, so I don't get, I'm, I got twitchy fingers, so it helps remove the twitchiness out of my footage. You don't see the, the quad twitching as much when I take that out. Probably wasn't a good idea on this little one, so after this flight, I actually changed the pits around. So what you're looking at right now is the footage through that TBS camera, not bad at all. Uh, a little dark and that's just because this is through the fat shot goggles fat shark goggles right here and this particular view here is through the Amway commander goggles um, I know people love fat shark but look at it guys I mean did you just see the difference from switching from fat shark DVR to to Amway DVR it's quite a difference isn't it so I still love them so <laughs> Here you go is we're much more in control. We've made some PID changes and you can see a little better how it's fast and and a very controlled little quad, but but wow, it's got power, like I said, and a spare. Getting a little bit of prop oscillation. I can fix that in the PIDs as well. I dumbed them down pretty hard so I could actually get some decent footage in for you guys. So Still ripping away here. Let's talk about what's coming up next. What comes up next is I'm gonna flip over to that Firefly action cam for you. Uh, again, 1080 at 60 frames, uh, or sorry, at 30 frames a second. If you're looking to start doing some footage for your own little channel, definitely an option at, like I said, anywhere from 20 to $25. So I'll put some links below for you guys on that one. But again, just kind of cruising around. I don't have a lot to say other than it really performed well and and I liked it a lot. I, I feel I got my $119 worth for sure. It, it you know, met my expectations when I'm spending that money blind. So I was pretty happy with it. And as you can see, we can plow it right through the trees those motors had powers just to, to bust right through the branches as if as if nothing so all right guys that's about all we've got to say about this one uh don't forget drone drop quad box both these guys do this kind of thing and uh, they're really fun uh if you have the money and you want to do that you know it's definitely an option for you to check out on um, getting one that way so as always guys make sure you look for the links below thanks for watching and happy flying hey guys thanks for stopping by and checking out the quadcopter review if you want to see more interesting reviews on fpv related stuff take a look up here in the old right corner right there you'll find links to all the rest of my reviews if you want to get in on some of the best giveaways on YouTube look over here don't forget to subscribe right here on my chin and if you want to check out my flying only videos separated from the review channel check that out right here and thanks for coming don't forget to subscribe and happy flying